We're, we're preaching on Leviathan. Um, it's been our series the last few weeks. The intention, general plan is to finish next Sunday. I want to tell you that this spirit is a hostile spirit. Those of you that have missed out on this um, series, Leviathan, when you boil him down, is the spirit of pride. I read to you from Psalm 18.6 that the Solomon says we live in a hostile world. But he says that the antidote or the, the answer for a hostile world is that when we call on the name of the Lord, he hears us and we have an audience with him. So for you personally and for you who are going through things as an individual and as a family, both spiritually, physically, emotionally, the answer to the hostilities that surround you is that you in humility call upon him he will answer he will give you an audience with himself and he will bring you out and bring you through you're going to overcome if you just won't quit you're going to overcome and then it is a spiritual hostile environment nobody has to look very hard listen to too much news nobody has to study the upcoming elections too hard to see that we live in a hostile environment spiritually speaking and I believe that Le Leviathan and, and one of the reasons that we are studying this is because I believe that this is a last day spirit unleashed by hell even though it has existed for centuries I believe that he is being unleashed like never before to hinder not only the world but really to creep in the church to stop us from impacting and changing our world and doing something about the darkness. There's many things that I want to say here, but let, let me just give you a little example before we get into this. We're at Job 41. If you want to turn there, if you don't have your Bibles, they'll be up on the screen. We really want to encourage you to go home, dust your Bibles off, and, and get in those this week, and that will look at your neighbor and tell them, uh, dust your Bible off and that'll help you with the Leviathan. Tell them that. There's power in the Word. Amen? Amen? I said there's power in the Word of God. Amen. And if you'll get in it and read it for yourself, it will help you. Amen. Talking about being hostile. Sometimes the world becomes hostile around us and if we're not careful, we'll turn in hostility and respond and be hostile toward God. And we would never put it in terms like that, but we do it. And the root of that is a misunderstanding of who God is, what's going on in the world, the battle around us, and ultimately, Leviathan and pride. So I was going to give you an example of this. This is real dangerous because it's within my own house, but it has to do with my youngest that just turned six. So it's good to have my mom and dad in service with us today. Once again, they're here for the grandkids. And so, Benjamin turned six, and my dad always had this tradition, and I carried on with my boys, that even though, as a family, they would get us a, a birthday gift, I make it a practice that he passed on and would do. He would always bring home just one personal item from himself. So we did this from, for Benjamin yesterday, and he got him a little truck like thing you just push a button it's supposed to roll and kind of uh, have sh shocks on it where it goes up and down and do all this stuff he took it out of the package and wrapped it you know took it out of the package for Benjamin but he left the bottom plate on it well Benjamin hits the button and it doesn't roll it doesn't do what it's supposed to do it doesn't go anywhere <clears throat> Now, how many knows to a six-year-old, this can be a little aggravating. <laughs> Papa just gave me a gift that doesn't work. So I wasn't there. We had a couple of situations that I had to deal with yesterday morning. And so Benjamin took it outside on the porch where Papa couldn't see. And the story I got is he got a little hostile. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like things that father gives us doesn't quite work right sometimes we pray and we don't quite have the answers that we think we should get we don't have the breakthroughs and the timing that we should get now when 
Papa heard of what was going on, he realized that he made a mistake, left the bottom plate off. He took it off. I told Benjamin, you need to apologize to Papa. Because I think I heard that he kicked the truck. <laughs> it's embarrassing, but he did. He acts like his mama, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm sure that's from his dad's side, but anyway. Sometimes we throw a fit, don't we? We would never say it, but we get a little angry at God. We get a little upset at God because He gives us something like prayer, like church, like, you know, the Word. He gives us stuff and we try, but there's a bottom plate left on it. And what He really wanted, you know, Benjamin's sick, so there's, there's a reason. He didn't understand bottom plate and how to take it off. But you're not six, you're 16, you're... 26, you're 46, you're 66, and you should have spiritual sense enough to do your part. And instead of kicking the truck or getting angry and throwing a fit and becoming angry at God and walking away and saying, this just doesn't work. God wants you to do your part and in a hostile environment continue to cry out to Him in humility and stick with it until the breakthrough comes. I'm telling you, breakthrough is your promise and it's a part of your covenant with the Father. And if you will not give in to your flesh and give in to your emotions, your Father, your Heavenly Father, will never let you go. He will never let you down. Don't play into the enemy's tricks and confess defeat when God has declared in His Word, victory for you. Hallelujah. Oh, that's good preaching. Come on, somebody. Thank you. I know it is. Because <laughs> the Holy Spirit's doing it. Job 41. We've been reading these verses. Time's getting away. So let me, let me just skip down. Let's, how about we start at verse 7. Can you fill his skins with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? And because I skipped, the very first verse speaks of Leviathan. Lay your hand on him, remember the battle, never do it again. Verse 9, indeed, any hope of overcoming him is false. Shall one not be overwhelmed at his sight, the sight of him? No one else is so fierce that he would dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand against me? Who has preceded me that I should pay him? Everything under the heaven is mine. Verse 15, his rows are of scales are his pride shut up tightly as with the seal. One is so near another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another, they stick together and cannot be parted. His sneezings flash forth and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning light, sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke goes out of his nostrils as from a boiling pot and burning rushes. His breath kindles coals and a flame goes out of his mouth. Very important to remember. Verse 22. Strength dwells in his neck. Everybody say neck. neck. And sorrow dances before him. Verse 24, his heart is as hard as a stone, and even as hard as the lower millstone. The very last verse, he beholds every high thing. Here it is about Leviathan. He is king over all the children of pride. Isaiah 27, 1, don't turn there, look at it on the screen says, in the day that the Lord, the Lord, with his severe sword, great and strong, will punish Leviathan. There is victory. The fleeing serpent, Leviathan, that twisted serpent, and he will slay the reptile that is in the sea. We've continued to look at Isaiah 27, 1 as a foundational scripture. I want you to see this verse because I want you to know that there is victory. And the victory comes through the severe sword of the Lord, not through human willpower. And for those of us who make the statement or the declaration, I have no problem with pride, chances are... <laughs> there are many scales that are covering up your knowledge and understanding that actually pride exists in your life. Because we're all dealing with Leviathan but there is victory. Now we put this picture up one more time because some of you haven't been here to see this. To do our best, a drawing in 1865 uh, is how 
Job. God describes Leviathan to Job through 14 questions and statements. As you can see, he's a dra dragon, sea dragon-like creature. But notice the most important part is the strong sword of the Lord. The Lord is there with the sword behind him. This is how we defeat him. And so we need the Lord to pierce, dividing the flesh, the soul, and the spirit, and get into our heart to free us from the spirit of Leviathan. Why do we need, need that? And go ahead and take that picture away so they'll listen to me. We need that because God is calling us to a life of adventure and a life that says, you know what, I want to be a Christian and I want to be a part of a church and I want to be a part of a youth ministry that mirrors Jesus of the gospel. In other words, I want to go after what Jesus did and who he is and what he did. I want to see the, the lost saved, the sick healed, I want to see the bound delivered, the captive set free, the demon possessed totally freed. I want to see the dead raised. I want to see the impossible become possible through our God. But listen to me, there is a hostility that goes to another level when a believer and a church makes a commitment to go after the impossible. Here's the problem. When we go after the impossible... Because we're still growing, sometimes one is healed and one isn't. I was just thinking about this morning. There's a lady here in the Wednesday night service the Lord gave me, I believe it was a word of knowledge, one of the nine gifts of the Spirit mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12 uh, that God was healing migraine headaches. There's a lady that came in after the early service and she said she was not even here. She was at home, somebody else stood in for her. And she said, all of that was broken, all that is gone, I'm completely healed. Amen, we give God praise for that. <clears throat> One of the other ladies that we pray for, unfortunately later in the week, or maybe in the next day, went to the emergency room. Now I'm just being honest with you. Why didn't, you know, I don't have all the answers. I know we're still growing. I know we're still learning. There are variables that go into that. But you know what? Just because the one lady had to go to the emergency room doesn't make me want to fight and go after and deal with the hostility of the enemy any less. I'm still going to go after the miraculous. I'm still going to believe God to heal. I'm still going to believe God to deliver. I'm still going to believe that miracles will become a common place among the people of God because it is the works of Jesus and it's what He wants to do in this hour. Come on, somebody. You ought to give Him praise. But in that environment, there will be hostility and Leviathan will go to work. He will work with or without that, that environment. But in that environment, he will come against you. Why? Watch this. Look at me. He wants to discourage you so that you will give up on the impossible and you will sit on the pew and just accept the normal. Let's float downstream like every other church and every other believer that just says, well, it just must not be God's will. I'm sorry, there are a lot of things, no I'm not sorry, I'm telling you, the truth is there are a lot of things that are God's will, we just don't go after them. <laughs> and sometimes we don't go after them because we're too proud, because we say, well what if I pray for her and she doesn't get healed? The fruit is in God's hands, I just do my part. Well what if I let them lay their hands on me, you know, something spooky might rub off on me, come on, get over that, that's pride. <laughs> I'm not trying to pick on you, I'm just trying to get to the truth here. 6, 7, and 8, actually we jumped ahead and looked at just a little bit, so I'm going to run through them quickly, and then hopefully we'll get as far as we've gotten early service, number 10. If you're still with me, say a big amen. amen. The reason I jumped ahead to 6, 7, and 8 is because even as I believe they're in the middle of the 14, they... They are foundational verses and points about Leviathan that unless we get them, we will never be completely free. I want students to hear me today. Because Leviathan doesn't wait until you're 25 to set in. Leviathan sets in early and soon and tries to bind you up. Verse 15 points to he has rows of scales shut up tightly. What does this mean? This means Leviathan hides himself and doesn't want to show his hand. I mentioned this, but I'm reflecting back on it because it's, it's 
that place that we're at in the, in the chapter, and it bears repeating. He doesn't show his hand. In other words, pride doesn't want to show you that he's pride actually at work. And so he covers himself with rows of scales. I mentioned that those rows of scales are lesser spirits. And if you believe that there are not principalities and powers and works of darkness on the wrong side of the spirit realm, then you're sadly mistaken. Even as on the right side of the spirit realm, God exists, the Holy Spirit exists, Jesus exists, archangels, angels on God's side that work on our behalf exist, so do these dark spirits. And what pride does, because it is a strong principality, a strong ruling spirit, Leviathan, he draws to himself lesser spirits that does a lot of his bidding. I mentioned several of those, so I'm not going to take a long, a long time here, but things like insecurity. I'm not good enough. Things like unforgiveness, anger, bitterness. He, he, he draws these lesser spirits. Things like excuses of why I can't serve God because other people let me down. Is it really about you? Do you see how pride's working there? Anger toward other believers. Other believers let me down. They didn't serve God. They didn't live by the Bible. I saw them sin and they were in church with their hands lifted saying, Oh, I love Jesus. <clears throat> And so they let me down. They didn't serve God. Is that a reason for you to turn from God? The list could go on and on. And as I said, I've already mentioned this. If you've missed some of the, uh, the series, please, in the foyer there, you can sign up. There's a place, and many of you that have, uh, your CDs are ready to pick up. Number seven, if you're still with me, say amen. amen. The scale, this is found in verse 16, are so near, no air can come between them. As I mentioned earlier, air here is not oxygen, like we breathe, but it is ruach. It stands for the Spirit of God. And so here's what God is saying to Job and to us. Leviathan collects to himself lesser spirits and they join so tightly together so that no air can come between them. What are you saying? What Leviathan will do is bring lesser spirits to surround you and to bind you so that the air of God cannot get through to free you to bring deliverance and to bring victory to you. The reason I believe this is right smack dab in the middle and the reason we come back to it is this is crucial for breakthrough and victory. You've got to decide, oh God, more than anything, I need your air to come through. I need the air of God to break through and to set me free in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Pride will keep you away from Ruach. Pride will keep you away from the air of God. Are you listening to it? I don't need a move of the Holy Spirit. I don't need the gifts of the Holy Spirit to move. That is pride. Watch this. This is what I believe the Holy Spirit gave me. Pride seals the mind. Pride says this, I am a good person and I need nothing else. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you need more. I've just got truth for you this morning, you need more. Look at me, Braden. You need more, son. We all do, right? We all do. But the only way to receive more and we jumped ahead and we gave you some reasons how to be free of Leviathan. The first thing is to humble yourself. The second thing is to not think of yourself more highly than you should. And the third thing is to practice acts of humility. But watch this. When you practice the act, act of humility and in a service like this or another service where the Holy Spirit tugs on your heart, instead of setting in pride, you actually come to an altar and allow individuals to, do the, to carry out the doctrine as in listed in the book of Acts of the apostles called the laying on of hands and instead of pride you say you know what I could use that I'm telling you you just give pride a black eye when you do that oh is that good preaching 
When you say, I could use more, I could use something more in my life, and the air breaks through, there is victory in your life. Look at this. Let me, let me show you how the enemy works. Number eight, they are joined together. They stick together and cannot be parted. I referenced last week, Luke 11, 25 and 26, so we won't do that this week, but Jesus here talks about how spirits on the dark side communicate. He talks about how a person goes free, but then those, that spirit that a person is set free from will go and gather seven other spirits more wicked than himself and will come back to the person that has been set free and will look and see if there is an opening. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you've got to keep the door shut. Can I tell you that some people get free in church, but they leave the door open or they open the door back. How do you open the door back? Disobedience and sin. Don't open the door back. Keep the door shut. How do you keep the door shut? Humility. Humble yourself. Practice ruach. Practice the presence. Humble yourself before God. Practice acts of humility. Are you getting this? I'm telling you, the enemy strategizes against you. They communicate one another on how to get to you. How to bind you and keep you bound. And they do not want you to serve Jesus. Today I want to talk to a prodigal son or daughter in this room. The place that you're at right now, it may be the deepest place that you've ever been in sin. Because when you walked away from God, it left you, and it, it left you in a place where a door was open for more wickedness to come in than had you before. I'm not by any stretch of the imagination... Um, saying that you are possessed what I am saying is that you are bound or oppressed by the enemy but what needs to happen today is that you take a step of humility and you say Jesus I walked away and the devil has a hold of me a deeper grip than he's ever had before but I'm ready for this thing to stop oh I just want to talk to somebody this morning God loves you enough for me to stop this sermon and tell you prodigal son or daughter it's time to come home and it's time for what the enemy has done and is doing in your life it's time for it to stop and there are people that have been praying for you some of you don't even know it but these items here at the altar they represent some of you that are sitting in this building and you're here because somebody has been praying for you people have been coming in and out of this building they've been laying hands on these items not even knowing who they represent but they've been praying for you we had a lady I told this story but there's some of you that wasn't here that as she came in I said I know who you are and I, I knew her for other reasons but I also knew her because we were praying for her picture at the altar somebody brought it she came in rededicate her life to God I want to tell you if you have loved ones that are lost friends neighbors it's working bring their item up here and lay them on the altar we're praying that God will bring in a harvest of lost souls and prodigals but some of you are here today as a result of our prayers and I'm giving you a warning the enemy has come through an open door and brought more wickedness but it can be broken today through your free will of humility the base may be on the bottom of your truck but quit kicking it throwing a fit and saying God doesn't care do your part you're old enough to get the screwdriver out in other words you're old enough to make a decision with your free will to say Jesus I need you to forgive me and give me a brand new start you can do it today come on come to Jesus ah, it's time to give rebellion a kick in the head I've got to hurry. I know time's getting away, and some of you clock out at noon. And bless them, Jesus. Number nine, are you still with me? Amen. Amen. His sneezing flash floor forth light. This is so good. You've got to get this. His eyes are like eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lights. Sparks of fire shoot out. Can I tell you that the enemy has a replica, um, a phony of the real deal. And so the Bible says Leviathan has a fire that shoots out of his mouth. I have mentioned throughout this series, but we've not looked at it in detail, that it is from the mouth that Leviathan manifests. You will learn that a person is a person of pride if you hang around them and listen to their talk long enough. Or has a root of pride. 
Look at this. Matthew 12. I have several verses. I'm going to try to hurry, but this is so good. We need the word. Verse 34. This is Jesus speaking. Some of you are going to be ready to vote Jesus in as your pastor as you hear this. Look at this. This is Jesus preaching. Brood of vipers. Don't you love that? In other words, Jesus says, you snakes. How can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your words, Monday through Saturday and in between services, come out of your heart. <clears throat> a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it on the day of judgment. For by it your words will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So he says, out of your mouth, every word, even idle words, that means just words that you just kind of let fly off the handle, and they're just... Let's get farther explanation. The Message Bible reads like this, verses 34 through 37. You have minds like a snake pit. There's, there, there's an important word right there. We're, we're going to get to it. I'm going to show you something. How do you suppose what you say is worth anything when you are so foul-minded? Have you ever heard of somebody that's foul-mouthed? Did you know that a foul mouth comes from a foul mind? But even a believer can have a foul mind, and even though the mouth doesn't breathe out cursings, it breathes out negativity, gossip, backbiting, and that is a foul mind giving way to a foul mouth. Mm, that's good preaching. It's your heart, look at this, it's so good. Not the dictionary that gives meaning to your words. <laughs> Have you ever heard somebody say something but you knew they meant something else? <laughs> that's what he says. A good person produces good deeds and words in season after season. An evil person is blight on the orchard. Let me tell you something. Every one of these careless words is going to come back and haunt you. There will be a time of reckoning. Words are powerful. Take them seriously. Words can be your salvation. Words can also be your damnation. Mmm, that's powerful. Look at your neighbor and tell him, watch what you say. But here's the problem. Here's the, here's the deal. On our free will, we can watch what we say and work on it as hard as we can, and we should. But we need to be changed from the inside out so that we don't have to strive so hard it can become... I'm hurrying. Don't, don't leave me. Stay with me. Look at your name and say, hang on. A few more minutes. Here, here we go. James 3, 5 through 10. I, I refer to these verses, but we've got to read them. got to see them in the Bible. Some of your Bibles are so dusty, you're getting some word finally. Here we go. <laughs> Come on, lighten up. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird and of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. When it blesses our God and Father and with it we curse men. We have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth produces blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be. The message Bible reads this way. A bit in the mouth of a horse controls the whole horse. A small rudder on a huge ship is in the hands of a skilled captain. Sets a course in the face of the strongest wind. A word out of your mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. That's powerful, isn't it? Do you know your words are that powerful? Watch this, almost done. It only takes a spark, remember, to set a forest fire. A careless or wrong place word out of your mouth can do that. Watch this. By our speech, we can ruin the world, turn harmony to chaos, throw mud on a reputation, send the whole world up in smoke, and go up in smoke with it. Smoke right from the pit of hell. This is scary. You can tame a tiger, but you can't tame a tongue. It's never been done. The tongue runs wild, and a want a killer 
With our tongues we bless our God, our God our Father. With the same tongue we curse the very men and women He made in His image. Cursings and blessings out of the same mouth. My friends, this can't go on. Leviathan manifests out of the mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When we speak cursing, it is coming forth out of our heart. And many, even within the walls of the church, and we know it's out in the world, we know that Leviathan is working overtime, but it even works its way into the church. To outside in the world, curse men, and then come into the house of God and bless God. I've got to show you this. Proverbs 18.21 tells us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. I've quoted that many times from the New King James Version, but the Message Bible reads it this way. It's so powerful. Words kill, words give life. They either poison or fruit. You choose. You choose. Look at your neighbor tell them, you choose. We get to choose to, to bring forth fruit from our mouth or to bring forth poison. Get this, get this, get this. How do I overcome Leviathan? I overcome him with a mouth. How do I give him more room to operate and work? In my church, in my youth group, in my life, in my family, in my home? With the mouth. How do I feed him? With the mouth. Remember I told you last week, humble yourself to feed Leviathan. But we went a little bit deeper. Not only humble yourself, but don't think too highly of yourself. Just the average person... And if God used you, being used by an extraordinary God, then practice humility. Do things to practice humility. I told you, I'm not preaching it to you something that I'm not having to get. There are people through this series that I, I didn't even know I needed to go to, but as I'm, I'm going deep or praying hard into this and asking God to have his way with Ronnie Freeman, there's some people that I had to ask for some forgiveness for, too. And I'm taking this thing very seriously because I believe it's serious. And as we do that, Leviathan just breaks off of us. Those scales, those roots just begin to be uprooted. But let, let me go to a, an area that we haven't thought of. And, and this is my second close and I have one more. Last Sunday from Leviticus, Leviticus 14, and those of you that were not here, and I know I mentioned this, but it's not because I'm preaching, it's because you need to get the word in your, in your head and in your mind. If you were not here last Sunday night, I'm telling you, you ought to get the CD. We preached from Leviticus 14, and it's just incredible about cleaning the atmosphere of our homes because it's God's Word. But one of the things that corrupts our homes is not only, you know, I talked about various sins that go on in a home and the reason we come into church and we fill one atmosphere, we drive up in the driveway, we go into our house, we fill another, and we talked about how to clean your home out by taking the Holy Spirit in there with you by binding the enemy using the keys of the, key, of the kingdom and by loosing the angel of the Lord to flush out the atmosphere and then plead the G blood of Jesus over every room of your house as the Holy Spirit points his finger on this and this and this, get rid of it and then open the front door and excuse the devil. You have no place in this. But one of the things, watch this, that you can't see with the physical eyes that lives and brings... a a negative, hurtful atmosphere in your home is words that have been spoken. Cursings. And I don't mean just curse words. Negativity, hatefulness toward others, talking about a fellow believer, gossip, backbiting, talking about somebody else in the youth group and running them down. Just because you didn't put it on Facebook, God still heard it. And then those of you that, really, that put it on Facebook, you really went to another level. You need not only ask God forgive you, you need to go to them and ask them to forgive you because you did it publicly. You need to... Mm, I'm just preaching good right here. I'm telling you, words live in our home. Words live in this church. We go through these hallways and we say things that we shouldn't say. That's why we come up here and pray and sometimes I walk through the church and we encourage you to do this and I just pray God flush out the atmosphere so that when we come together as a body and we come to worship let the atmosphere be free some of you think I'm crazy but I'm telling you it's truth the last one number 10 smoke goes out of the, ma out of the nostrils as from a boiling pot and burning rushes I'm going to do this quickly I promise third and final closing boiling the, the new King James uses the word 
bowling. This means to bowl or become violent. Have you ever seen a person bowl over? That's not your neighbor now. That was that early crowd, right? The, the King James uses the word seethe or seething. It means to seethe or bring contention. Watch this. Only by pride comes contention. It's the word of God. If there is contention in a house, there's pride. If there is contention in a relationship, there's pride. If there is contention in a youth group, there's pride. If there is contention in a church, there's pride. Mmm, that's good preaching. A bowling pot, people who bowl over and become angry. Those of you that are struggling with anger and you bowl over and you hit a hole in the wall and you, come on somebody, kick a hole in the door and you, you just lose it and bowl over. At the root of that anger is pride and God wants to set you free. He's not here to beat up on you, condemn you. You know what he wants you to do? Humble yourself, practice humility. And one of the ways to practice humility is to decide, you know what? My meal can wait till after 12. Still, I'm a preaching Tawana. You only have a right to say amen. My meal can wait till after 12, 13. I'm going to go up to that altar and say, God, deliver me from bowling over, seething over. Because something in me, Leviathan says, I have a right to defend my rights. I have a right to defend myself, and it manifests through kicking a hole in the wall. I'm just trying to be real. Some of you want to play church. I want to be real. Amen. Proverbs 13.10 By pride comes nothing but strife. But with well advised, but with the well advised is wisdom. This is the word that the Lord gave me with this. This is so powerful if you'll get it. I know all of you are taking notes, so you want to write this down. It is unwise to strive, fight, and not get along with others. Period. But by pride, watch this, comes a lack of wisdom. And the Bible says a lack of wisdom brings destruction. What is wisdom? Wisdom is to have knowledge and know how to apply it. We got a whole lot of knowledge right here, right? That's why I say dust it off, read it, get in the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit will not only give you knowledge of the Word, He'll give you wisdom to know how to apply the knowledge. Here's how you put it into practice in your life, your church, your house, your family. But when we lack knowledge and we lack wisdom, we lack wisdom to know how to apply knowledge, it brings destruction. And that destruction, what I'm sharing with you, is bound up in this spirit of Leviathan. And it brings strife, it brings contention. But wisdom shows me how to be a peacemaker. And I was sharing someone this with my personality I have a person can I, can I just confess something I just went over my closings now I'm to number four don't throw stuff at me the Lord in the last season my walk with him really dealt with me about the difference between being a peacemaker and a peacekeeper God's called us to be peacemakers wisdom shows you how to be peacemakers even in the midst of strife and contention. But God did not call any of us to be peacekeepers. You know what a peacekeeper will do? A peacekeeper will make peace at all cost. My personality is to be one that wants to keep the peace or make peace. But God does not want us to sacrifice His word, His will, and His purposes in order to keep peace. But He does want us to be wise to be peacemakers as we flow with the wisdom of His Spirit. That's good stuff. Stand with me this morning. Aren't you glad for His Word?